Hello there and welcome once again to The Verdict. I'm Mick Cornett. This is Kent Myers. We're here every week meeting interesting people and dealing with topical issues. Glad you decided to join us and this week we bring in a candidate. Yes, we're getting uh, next to, to the end of the uh, election cycle or the campaign cycle, getting ready for the election. Uh, we haven't yet had on Joy Hoffmeister, who is the Republican candidate for state school superintendent. We did have her opponent on, John Cox, uh, right before the uh, runoff election. And we want our visitors to get uh, our viewers and visitors to uh, get acquainted with Joy, find out about her, find out what she wants to do if elected, and uh, what she thinks is important in this race. The campaign is coming to an end. It's almost election day. Stay tuned. You're watching The Verdict. Joy Hoffmeister, today's guest on The Verdict. I've known I was going to be an artist since I was a little kid. I still have teachers that in grade school that still have my artwork. I think I told them something along the lines of, keep that, it's going to be worth money someday. I'm Justin Mater, I'm an artist, and I'm Chickasaw. My muse is the Muskokian, the Mississippian art. When I see that, my mind just fills up with bubbles of ideas. My big thing right now is shell carving, the shell origins. My work is refined more and more until I found my own rhythm. I also do metallurgy, where I've uh, been acid etching copper and hammering copper to make a copper repoussé. You only have one chance to do it right, so it, it requires a lot of planning and thought and just patience. My Chickasaw heritage is the foundation of who I am. It's the roots of where I come from, and it inspires me as an artist and inspires the tenacity of never giving up. Learn more about today's Chickasaws at profilesofanation.com. People have been talking about energy independence for a long time. It's always been popular, but today it's possible. We have an enormous supply of oil and gas in the United States, much more than we thought just a few years ago. New technology, massive new discoveries, largely made by Oklahoma companies. It literally changes everything. And Oklahoma is leading the charge. Go watch this video to see why. Energy independence starts with us. Welcome back to the set of The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. Kent's going to introduce today's guest. As we indicated in the opening segment, our guest today is Joy Hoffmeister the Republican candidate for state school superintendent. Uh, she uh, had uh, destroyed the opposition <laughs> in the uh, primary and uh, as a result was not uh, faced with a runoff election, but she is facing, a, 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 of course, an opponent in the general election. Uh, Joy did her undergraduate work at uh, TCU, uh, uh, TCU Horn Frog. Very pleased about the OU game, but not so pleased about the uh, Baylor game, I guess, <laughs> recently. Uh, she uh, has uh, also obtained numerous teacher c uh, certificates from a number of institutions of uh, higher learning. Uh, she has spent 15 years running the Kumon uh, Math and Reading Centers in Tulsa, with uh, serving personally over 4,000 students in her capacity. She had 19 years experience with special education teams uh, and making sure that they ran correctly and uh, served the uh, clients well. She served on the Oklahoma State uh, Board of Education for two legislative terms. She was appointed by Governor Fallon. Uh, she uh, did quite well, as I indicated, in her uh, primary election with 58% of the vote. Uh, dispatching all other uh, Republican contenders, and now she is here for her first appearance on The Verdict to tell us what she wants to do if elected. Joy, welcome. Glad Thank to have you. you. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be with you. Well, it's great to have you here, and congratulations on the Republican primary win. And then I guess the you know really you have to roll up your sleeves That's and get right. after it. And, and and I'm when I'm always talking to a when I've talked to a statewide candidate, I always um, you know remind them that tongue in cheek, it's a big state. It is. Yeah. It is. We, I have um, traveled all over and actually have just turned 74,000 miles on the odometer uh, in Oklahoma on the campaign trail. Wow. So we're seeing 
all parts of the state, and it, it is wonderful. That must Great be people. exhausting. What's the pace like? And how, how often do you get to kind of go to your home base? Well, how, much, my, how many nights are you on the road? Yeah, we're, we're on the road often, uh, but throughout the day. And mm -hmm. I, I do want to make it back uh, to uh, see my husband. Um, all four of my kids are grown, and he is there. Uh, we're empty nesters for the first time since August. so. I do make mm -hmm. it home even if it's really late and yeah. even if it means leaving at uh, 4 in the morning to arrive for a breakfast at 7. Tell me about the feedback you're getting on the campaign trail. What, what are people interested in? What are they using to base their decision on, sure. on in this election? Well, I think the, the feedback we are receiving is that we needed to have uh, what I saw when I was a state board member and saw the need, um, and that was a leader who was going to be inclusive and collaborative but work in such a way that we actually move forward. We can't afford to move back. Um, our uh, graduation rate is too low. Our remediation rate is too high. And the skills gap continues to widen. But most importantly, um, our individual students, for too many of them, they are not possessing the skills they need to uh, reach their hopes and dreams uh, with their aspirations. And as a mother, that's the most tragic. It's about the individual student, and I want them to be prepared for their next steps in learning when they graduate. Okay, and so there we have rural education. Mm -hmm. Obviously, a lot of people interested in that. We have suburban education. A lot of students enrolled in suburbia in, in the state of Oklahoma. Yet most of the attention, at least it seems like m most of the media, centers around the two large urban school sure. districts and the low performers there. How does one person, a state superintendent, kind of deal with all of those different educational structures and, and, and situations and parenting and, and it's just yes. it's not the same? That's right and it is not the same and we need to um, I think be sure that we are not seeking a simple bumper sticker solution to complex problems. Um, I do recognize that we have different needs and Ronald Reagan said those closest to the problem have the best hope of solving it. In education, I believe that means those closest to the students um, make the best decisions for them because they know them if we equip them with good information. So this is uh, very important that we not have a one-size-fits-all approach for our state. Um, every chance we have, we need to be custom-fitting the, the needs of districts. And uh, but. We need to set high expectations, but then government needs to get out of the way and let teachers teach. Well, you've raised four children, obviously yes. been close to them, and they're uh, grown and out on their own, but you've also been close to a lot of other students in the course of your career. That's uh, right. How has that equipped you to do well, this job? Well, it has equipped me in a way that I think is unique because um, I have uh, experience as a public school classroom teacher but a career educator with also the experience outside our state and actually outside our country as well. I have an eye on the uh, competitive nature of uh, the world our kids are gonna face uh, because I know that. I've uh, worked with a company that is in, based in 47 countries with very high academic standards and for the past 15 years I've been working with international curricular standards. Uh, we need to get back to basics in a way where we are focused on rich instruction so we have a deep foundation. And what has happened in the U.S. is we've focused so much on test results mm -hmm. that we've created a toxic climate that is so focused on the test questions and the outcome of high stakes testing that it's pushed to the periphery those subjects that make for a well-rounded education. Mm -hmm. What, what do people tell you? What sort of feedback do you get as you're, as you're traveling? What I hear is um, people are interested in results. They want to know that someone has a proven track record and is going to be an advocate and will include all stakeholders. The reason I ran was because as a State Board of Education member, I saw firsthand what it means to have failed leadership in the State Department of Education. We have to have a leader who understands the need to bring in stakeholders to work in a very effective way with parents, with our experts in the classroom, our teachers, with our school leaders, uh, with our community groups, our business groups as well, and our legislators. So I have built um, a coalition 
across the state, but it began while I was a State Board of Education member. And would I re reach out to those uh, superintendents and ask them about how a vote I was going to make was going to affect their students because I did shoulder the responsibility of every vote I cast affected all 678,000 Oklahoma public school students, every teacher in public school, and every parent of a public school child. You used a term in a prior answer that I want to follow up on sure. a little bit, skills gap. Yes. Would you take a step back and define yeah. skills gap and then tell us why that's important in your campaign? Well, we do have a skills gap that we understand is widening based on the information that our industries and business are reporting to, to us. Um, we have to recognize that um, in 2013, the top 10 positions, the top 10 jobs, didn't exist in 2004. So how do we adequately prepare our students to be able to deal with the demands that will occur in the future? The way we do that is with a strong, solid foundation so that they can apply that to the positions that haven't even been invented yet that they're going to be filling. But what is the gap? The gap is that our students are graduating without the skills they need to fill positions that our, um, that our economy is seeking. So what that means is if they don't do this, then that student can't be successful. It's not about satisfying business needs. It's about the student and making sure our students are successful and recognizing the barriers that prevent them from reaching that success. The two largest districts in the state have a significant Hispanic influence. A mm -hmm. lot of these kids go to an English-speaking school and they go home to a Spanish-speaking home. How do you deal with that when so much of education is verbal and, and communicated yes. that way? Well, the English language learner is um, certainly a large population within Oklahoma. Um, and in pockets of Oklahoma, we wouldn't expect to have such a high ELL population. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll, I'll use an example even from the um, Tulsa Jinx area. 400 Burmese refugees in the school um, without any English. And when you drop that, what, that is one, one group um, of the many, many, you know, 34 Tulsa, I believe it's something like 77 languages. Um, wow. And Oklahoma City, I know, mirrors this as well. But the English language component of, uh, has much research, um, and we need to act on evidence, not anecdote, not uh, perception, yeah. but let's act on evidence as we drive forward with policies so that we have confidence that we are working in a way that is smart, that is going to have the um, best use of taxpayer dollars to ensure that our students are um, high achievers. Uh, I do think that this comes back to why I'm running. I have a vision, but I also have a plan. It is time in Oklahoma education that we come back to really a Henry Bellman approach with a, a master plan, a long-term, I'm, I'm proposing more of an eight-year plan so that we are able to deal with those elements that make up a strong, vibrant public education system and that we're not building that highway three miles at a time in education. <laughs> we need to get a break. Joy Hoffmeister is the Republican candidate for state superintendent. More to come with the candidate, Tom Liberti. We'll be right back. When you have something important to communicate, it becomes clear that there's a lot of competition for your audience's attention. So how can your message stand out and actually resonate with your audience? Legal Graphics has the answers. The team at Legal Graphics will work with you to plan, design, and even test your presentation to ensure your message will be heard and remembered. Call Legal Graphics today to schedule an appointment. The readiness is all. The good life comes naturally to Tulsa where nature's beauty is matched with an eye for aesthetics. A legacy of neighborhoods graced with lawns and landscaping and handsome homes. A place that seems to have patented an ideal lifestyle. Bank First is loyal to the quality of life Tulsa assures its citizens, to the priority placed on education, culture, and growth. 
loyal to builders who transform raw land into residential charm. Developers who see opportunity and add vitality to Tulsa's economy. Bank First serves both enterprise and private lives that need a loyal partner. It's how we help nurture this city's very good life. Bank First. Loyal to Oklahoma. Loyal to you. back on the verdict. Our guest today is Republican nominee or candidate for the state school superintendent, Joy Hoffmeister. Ken? Joy, I uh, spent a little bit of time getting ready for this show to uh, look at your website. And I've got a, a number of questions, uh, sure. points that you make on your website. The first one, uh, you have a phrase on that that says, don't mistake motion for progress. What do you mean by that? That's a great question. Well, I, I love that phrase. Um, and what I think it means is we have done that. We are working tirelessly. But imagine yourself with wheels spinning and you're not we do really that quite working. Often on this show. <laughs> uh, we don't have traction that moves us forward. So this is, this is I think, more about um, uh, that we can't just continue to work really hard and not have the results we need. Our students deserve a first class education. And I believe in order to accomplish that, we're going to need to ensure that we have, again, a multi-year plan that is um, worked through with those stakeholders that are going to be affected by that, but also then with our legislators, so that this can be something that we deal with with our legislators in statute, taking care of those components that, that address high standards. We need this. Um, we need to have assessments that are balanced, not over testing, but that are comparable so that we understand how kids are doing um, it, here as well as it compared to other states. What type of standards are you referring to? Well, those standards need to be um, high standards that produce the outcomes we, we want to see for our students. So um, there are uh, many ideas on, on how to accomplish that. I think the, the key is let's work where we already have seen evidence show that we have the outcomes. So we can look at models that work um, and have already proven successful. Uh, first off, in other, uh, other states, or we can be inspired by a model from another uh, country even. However, we have to make certain that we have the local control and input in order to custom fit those elements we like into a fashion, a plan that works for Oklahoma. You also mentioned that you think it's important that there be accountability yes. to taxpayers. That's right. Uh, uh, tell yeah. us how you would bring that about and what that really means. Well, schools are government run by taxpayer money. And we have, I believe, an obligation to have transparency in how those funds are spent. That, those are hard-earned taxpayer dollars. Um, we, as a, as a businesswoman, I will tell you, I want to know how an investment is um, um, producing outcome uh, because we then can, um, I think, have a good argument for why we need to invest um, additional dollars into the classroom. Uh, but there, there needs to be evidence that uh, will illustrate that that has been successful. Mm -hmm. So the accountability piece is very important. Right now, our current A through F grading system attempts to do that. But the problem is, and, and this was something I wrestled with uh, while I was a State Board of Education member, I was one of two who voted no. Not because I don't want accountability, and it was that I saw early on that the, the metric um, was flawed and it wasn't going to produce results that rely were reliable. So what then ends up happening is, you receive a grade that may sound great to a community, but it is not actually giving a good reflection of what's happening, and then are, are some, some of the students would suffer um, without being recognized as um, not performing as high as they are. The other uh, converse of that is those schools that have a high poverty level end up receiving lower grades. Um, yet I know that that is not necessarily the full picture of what is happening in that school. So what we need to do is determine what is important, find a reliable, accurate, valid way to measure that, 
and then make certain then that we provide that good information to our schools, to our communities, so we can do something about those areas that need strengthening and celebrate the successes we have. Uh, teacher pay is always an issue when you talk Absolutely. about public education. Is there a way to tie pay to performance? Well, certainly there would be, um, but I want to focus on attracting and retaining top talent. This is uh, a point right now that I believe if we do not address our education system is at risk of collapsing. And that sounds alarm alarming, but we need to, we really need to appreciate that we are at a tipping point. Uh, we are exporting teachers right out of our fine education university uh, colleges to other states. We are losing veteran seasoned teachers to other industries. And we must recognize that in any, any job, there is job compensation, there's also job satisfaction. And right now, both of those are low. That can be addressed in two ways. One with a competitive teacher compensation, and that again needs to be part of that eight-year master plan so that we are um, ad really addressing immediate needs and lingering challenges in Oklahoma education, and that is one top priority. I noticed you have from time to time talked about, as you phrase it, the toxic environment yes. of over testing. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by toxic environment? So, so toxic that it drives out great people to other industries and uh, so toxic that children literally become ill or are being medicated because of the um, high pressure. Is that happening now? It is happening now. And, and is there over testing now? Yes. And what is um, occurring again is an overregulation and these, um, some of the tests are part of an overregulation uh, that is coming from our federal government, but we're doing it at the state level as well. I believe in the legislature, there is an interest right now to in ensure that we are um, using the limited resources that we do have in a way that produces the kind of results we need. And I do think we need to look at that budget and make certain that the tests that we are giving actually have a value added component to them after a student graduates. Um, if we were driving those kinds of remediation and resource dollars toward, let's say, ACT, uh, then we would see ACT scores lift. We would also see an individual economic impact for students because their own score will go up and they will have uh, more scholarship opportunities. More choice. When we are focusing on something else um, that does not have any value once you graduate, then we are diverting limited resources in a more diffused pattern that um, may not have the same success. So I wanna look a little bit more with uh, my business hat on to see how we can be um, more effective, mm -hmm. but also reduce the need for the uh, one test on one day determining a child's future. That is not really the way to measure students who are not um, going to bloom and, and unfold exactly the same way. We need to look at an entire day, and I'm sorry, entire year, and um, make certain that the teacher mm -hmm. who's had that student has input in final determinations about promotion. Less than a minute to go, we typically give candidates an opportunity to talk straight to the sure. voters about why they should vote for you in the upcoming election. Feel free to look at the camera if okay. you'd like. I'm happy to do that and thank you so much for the chance to visit with you as <laughs> well and the audience. Um, I am asking for your vote on November the 4th. This is a very competitive race. It is one that I believe um, will be a very important race in our education future. I want a public education system that is vibrant, that the school around the corner is a top choice, but I stand with parents in making sure that they have the opportunity to choose the best learning environment for their children. We will achieve this with a visionary, transformational leadership style, and that is what I possess and bring, but it's going to take a plan. I'm working with the legislators, and 45 of them stood with me before the primary, and we have broadened that coalition and are ready to get the job done. We can do it if we do it together. Thank you. Right. Joy Hoffmeister, the Republican candidate for state school superintendent. Thank you Thank for being you. on the verdict. Thank Thanks you. so much. Kent and I will have a final word when we get back. All children deserve a life of hope and love. 
but sometimes they experience a life of pain, neglect, and abuse. When that happens, each child deserves all the quality, assistance, and representation that can be offered in our legal system. For more information, call 23CHILD. Oklahoma Lawyers for Children, helping to bring hope and love back to the lives of abused children. You will always be mom and dad to me. I really think people are so unaware of the number of kids waiting just in Oklahoma. And I think if more people knew that those children were out there waiting, you know, I think that just by the way we live our lives and the people we talk to, that, that maybe we could help encourage adoption from Oklahoma. You will always be mom and dad to me. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record. Since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. And for almost 30 years, Oklahoma political, government, and business leaders have turned to the McCarville Report for accurate, reliable, inside information. Visit the McCarville Report online. Joy Hoffmeister, the Republican candidate for state school superintendent. Yes, it's been a race this year that's uh, drawn a lot more interest than normally I think it does, uh, in, in part because of the two good candidates we have to, from which to choose, but also in part some of the uh, uh, difficulties that have uh, occurred at the state board that were highly publicized and uh, the voters I think have gotten uh, that uh, in their minds and they say, how do we straighten this out? How mm -hmm. do we stop this? How do we start? worrying about uh, what's best for the kids and uh, these two candidates that uh, we've been able to bring to our viewers both have a vision for that and just be up to the uh, voters to decide which one has the better vision. We have uh, website information as we typically do for our guests. Uh, you can find out more information on Hoffmeister's campaign at joyforoklahoma.com. That's J-O-Y-F-O-R Oklahoma.com. And we have a website we'd love for you to visit there and tell us about a guest you'd like to see on an upcoming edition of The Verdict. It's theverdict.tv. We'll see you next week. Thank you for watching The Verdict. We'll see you next time.